Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kim. If you are new here, thank you so much for clicking on that thumbnail and checking out this video. If you're returning, thank you for coming back and talking about yarn with me. So this is my end of the month wrap up of March. Unfortunately, there was not that much crafting time because of preparation for that consignment. So like it just absorbed all the fun. But I did make decent amount of money from it so it was I guess worth it I don't know whenever anything takes me away from knitting and crochet I kind of question it's it's purpose in my life but I did have a few things that I did finish not a lot and I do have some things that I'm working on and I have something new to show you so let's start off with the finished objects the first thing I finished was the Truett set. And I started this back, I think last month. The, well, I'm saying last month as in February. I did finish the Annie's Hook and Needle Club kit from July of 2022. It was sent to me to review on this channel. And I think it's gorgeous. I put a short up on my channel about it, but this is the trivet and it utilizes a DK weight yarn. When I made the original video of the unbagging, I didn't know the actual name of the yarn. I just called it um, Annie's, but it's actually Omega Sinfonia. I'll link it down below. I'll just link my project page and then the yarn is actually linked on that project page. But I really like the trivet and I've shown that before. But there's more because I completed the coasters finally. So this is the front of the coasters. Those are those two. That's my backs. As you can see, you can't even see my ends at all. They just disappear when I weave them in. And these are good sized coasters. I mean, they're about the size of my hand. But these are going to go under my plants in the yarn barn. So this is the front of this one, the set, and the backs. And you can tell the fronts because you had to crochet in the back loop only. And then the last color grouping of them was this one with the teal edge. And this is a really, really cute little set. I'm not going to go into the hook and needle because I've already talked about all that, but I'm going to link that video in the cards and in the show notes. But this is 100% cotton. And to block these, all I did was soak them roll them up in a towel, which I've shown before how I do my blocking process in my Noros uh, Antarja scarf. If you haven't seen that, I'll link that as well so you can see how I block. And then, you know, lay them flat. I didn't even pin these at all. And they came out perfect. But I finished those. Total yarn used was 392 yards, and this is 100% cotton, which is perfect for trivets and coasters because it's absorbent and it can be washed at high temperatures and not damage the yarn. The yarn, I think, was really nice to work with. It's not a soft yarn. I mean, it's smooth, it's pretty soft, but it kind of feels like crochet thread in a way when it's knit, or when it's, knit, when it's crocheted to this gauge, which it's, you know, it kind of has to be for it to have the really obvious details. I have a lot of this yarn left over. So I already have it put up in the um, cotton leftovers basket or I would pull it out. I did note that the yarns, I weighed all of them when I first got them 
and they're all supposed to be I think a total of 55 grams or something there was a couple that was a little shy of the or maybe it's supposed to be 52 grams there was a couple that was a little shy of their exact yardage of what they were supposed to be but there were several that were like over the yardage that they were supposed to be regardless though on that I did have enough and leftovers of each one so I can make something else completely different with those leftovers and it'll probably be something as far as ornaments or some kind of other plant coastery type thing. So I was excited about that kit. So once I finished that up, I then had had this live and I'd seen where there was this um, designer that I am subscribed to their email list. They had sent out this free pattern, or it wasn't a free pattern, it was a dollar. But it was for a craft along for spring, and it was this little bit of butterfly. It was really cute. So in the original pattern, which is called Betty the Butterfly by Sweet Softies, and she has a great email list you can sign up for. She sends you free patterns all the time. Her stuff is adorable. And her patterns are very well priced, too. This one is only a dollar, and I'll link it down below, as always. But she used Karen Simply Soft Solids, Erin Wit Yarns, and she made this really cute butterfly. And it comes with two variations of the wings. The one that's more involved and the one where you just kind of use one single color. I was talking about this because there was also, like I said, a craft along. And the winner, if you got your butterfly submitted by the certain by March the 31st, you were entered to win $10 worth of patterns from her website our Ravelry and so I gave away I think like seven copies of that pattern in that live and I decided to make one as well but because I just can't do things to make life easy I decided not to make mine from worsted weight yarn so I made mine from fingering weight yarn and it's itty bitty. I did go for the involved wings, which was a nightmare. I'm not even going to lie. I hated these things so much when I was working on them. It was just a pain because I used a B hook, I think. Yes, a 2.25 B hook and 81 yards of fingering weight yarn. I realized when I was putting his little legs on that they're kind of crooked. But he's still pretty adorable. I didn't give him a face. But see, like, this back leg is, like, off where it should be. It should be more over here. And then he went, look all lopsided. But I'm not worried about it. Because, again, yeah. So, he's just, he's just kind of, like, turning. And I decided to put, like, a little loop on him. And make him an ornament, basically, for the yarn barn and I'll insert a couple of better pictures here so you can see him because he's so tiny he's kind of hard to see but for him I only use 81 yards of fingering weight yarn which is like hardly anything so this his body is actually some desert vista dye works and it's called the happiest place on earth and it's like her um, ode to Walt Disney World colorway the it's a small world people song and I used a total of 12 grams on it which is like 55 yards the dark pink is that's in his wing is some gecko yarns and that's a matte merino um, bamboo sock blend that I have had forever and it's the colorway called sizzle and I've only used one gram it was actually less than one gram then this little purple not purple blue it's called aqua it's from Lorna's laces it's a really old colorway I didn't even use like hardly even half a gram on it the aqua there and then his little legs and his tentacles and his eyes 
are hedgehog fibers and graphite and I use a total of four yards and one gram on those. The most yarn used was definitely his body. His little wings, the ivory, the round part, I only used two grams on them, eight yards. So, I mean, this is a pain, but it was a great way to use that little bits of yarn. And I mean, he's gonna be cute hanging. And I may not even use him as an ornament. I did buy these little um, floral sticks at Dollar Tree. And I may try to attach him to those and just have him as a plant stake in one of my plants. So we'll have to see how I come around to doing that in the future. But this is again the Betty the Butterfly by Sweet Softies and all these links will be down below. And that pretty much wraps up the finished objects for the month of March. I told you, not a lot. But I did get caught up on my snakes and these are actually caught up all the way until the 6th or the 7th because I worked on them the other day. So this weekend I'll work on this current week but my, this is my Lowe's snake. I mean they are getting long. Mm-hmm. And I am really enjoying them. So these are using random skeins of worsted weight yarn that I have had in stash forever. Some of this is some Red Heart with Love. Some of this is I Love the Yarn. I would say majority is I Love the Yarn. Although there are some vintage colors in here that I don't even know what they're from. They're just like this yellow is a really, this pale pale yellow is a really, really light, um, really, really light, really, really old Red Heart. The pattern did have an option so you can make yours a banded snake by putting a black um, row between each month. I didn't want to do that. I kind of enjoy just seeing the colorful snake. I don't really care that it, I, I don't really care years down the road to look back and be like, oh, let me see what the temperature was in 2023. That's not something that I'm going to do. So temporarily what I've done is just use stitch markers each time I start a new month, just for the sole purpose of showing you guys or how it's progressing. So that's my lows. And this is my highs. And you can start to see we're starting to get into some of my warmer colors. So that orange is 80s. We had some 80s. And then we've had some low days. Because you know this is Alabama, so it's just the way it is. And I thought it was super cool that if you notice on my low snake that there is one purple, like light purple. And that is because not even two weeks ago, it got down into the 20s. And when you hold that to the highs, you can kind of see that was right around the week we also had 80s. Alabama's crazy. But again, these are supposed to get like, I think eight feet long. And I think they're gonna be super cool hanging from my exposed rafters when I get out to the yarn barn. But I am super loving this process. So I also started the Amamagori Rainbow Birthday Cake by Lauren Epsi. And back on April the 1st was this channel's first birthday. Yay. Now we've actually, um, well, we, I say we because we're a community of people. All of you are part of me and we and we are all here together. But we had our first birthday. So happy birthday. And I was sick that week, unfortunately. Like I'm still like, I have the worst sinus pressure and headache around my eyes today. But it's not going to go anywhere anytime soon because it's spring in Alabama. 
but I made this community post. And if you don't check out my community post very often, you should because you're missing out on some fun things. Every Monday on my community post, I put patterns that are free to inspire you and to get you to create that week. Typically on Thursdays, I try to put a this or that post up. Sometimes I don't do it every Thursday, but I try. And then if I ever do shout outs, they're on Saturday. And then random posts can kind of fall in somewhere whenever they're needed. The post always go up around 8 a.m. Because that's what I try, I try to keep them at the same time every day so you kind of know when to look and I'm kind of an early bird anyways and it just makes it easier for me to set them up that way. But on the first I put up this post talking about our birthday with you guys because it's your birthday too for this community and I put a link to a birthday cake free pattern by the Lauren Epsi and this is adorable. She's like another one of my favorite crochet pattern designer. She just makes really cute um, kawaii things. They like have the little, it's basically an, an object that has a little face that's cute and fun. And she made this little cake and I was going to make one. My goal was to make one and have it done by the end of the month of March so I can show it in this video as a finished object and that didn't happen. But what I can show you is the work in progress and I'm so close to being done. So for this project, I am actually using the crochet hooks that I got from Cross Stitch, VIP Cross Stitch. And there's actually a new video up about that. It's going to go on the cards also for your viewing pleasure. And I'm making this with this crochet hook as part of my review. So I, when I saw this, I'm like, okay, it's got icing on it. It's really cute. And I thought, oh, that chenille yarn would be really cute icing because it's fluffy like icing. So I'm using the Just Chenille from Premier. This is a super bulky weight. And I'm going to let you know, my yarn weights are not going to match. It's fine. It's fine. It's an amamagori. It's not going to matter. But I'm using this for the icing, and then I'm using various Karen Simply Softs for the cake part. But what I'm doing is holding this double so that it kind of is closer to gauge and to make the sides of my cake stiffer so I have a properly shaped cake. In her pattern, it is a free pattern. Okay, so you're crazy not to download and make this thing because it's a super adorable. She does tell you to use some cutout circles for the top and bottom. So these are my handy dandy cardboard circles. And what you do is you take these and you put this in the top part. And then you put one in the bottom part and it keeps it from having a lumpy top or bottom. And then my thought process was the thicker yarn on the sides is going to help hold that in. So you make your dollops of icing on top, which that's what this is. And mine are just kind of hanging out via stitch markers right now until I sew them in. And then you do your body of your cake. Now she does show you how to do an invisible um, joins. She has links in the pattern to show you how to prevent that. I know how to prevent that. I just don't care for this because this is going to be sitting on a bookcase in my craft room and the one part's going to be to the wall. So I'm not worried about doing that at all. I'm just trying to make it and try out this crochet hook and see if the paint's going to come off. So I have jogs. <laughs> it's fine though. Also, when you get done making the body of the cake, you go back in with your icing yarn and you do some um, slip stitches over the top and that makes the icing in between, which I think is genius. And that's going to cover a lot of those jogs up. Although, you know, if you want to make this for a kid to play with, you may kind of want to take the few moments to hide the jogs. More than likely, the kid's not going to notice. But I've got the pink, which is actually called, I think, Flamingo. And it's actually not even Karen Simply Soft. It is one of the sweet something yarns. I'll have to 
look up. I haven't even put the yarns yet in the project page because I've done all this in like two nights. And then the coral and the yellow is Carolyn Simply Soft because I pulled that from a blanket that I'm making. The teal is the same stuff as the pink. And then I'm using this blue, which is a Karen Simply Soft. And I, this was a thrift store find. I think I paid a quarter for it. It didn't have a tag, but I know that's what it is because I can tell by the way the yarn's manufactured. And then I'm using this lavender on bottom. And I have this much of the first Chanel and a full one that I haven't even broke into. And these are from the Dollar Tree. So, in all reality, this is a pretty, uh, pretty fun, fast little project. But it's going to be super cute when it's done. As far as new things to the stash, I do have a video that I have to record that's going to go up probably next week of some yarns that I ordered back in December that I haven't even opened yet from Miss Babs. So we're going to look at those in another video. So I guess technically they're kind of new to me this month, although they're really not. But my husband did order me a book. I have an Amazon wish list, and I try to keep all kind of books and crafty things on there because occasionally my baby will shower me with a surprise, and it makes it easy so he gets something that I actually want and like. My Amazon wish list is actually public. I think there's a link to it in my about page. But this is one I had on there, and this is called the Colorwork Bible. So this is a hardback book. It retails for $27.99. It was not that on Amazon. And it is from Jesse Ostermiller. This does have a few patterns in there. But I mainly wanted this because it really goes into color theory. And I find color theory fascinating. I have some color wheels that I have purchased off Amazon before. I'll link those and this book in the description below. But learning color theory is so vital for handcrafts because you can really change the whole aesthetic of one of your projects just by changing the colors. And it goes into great detail about that, which I think is interesting. And then it goes into tips about how to use your camera on your phone to um, evaluate the colors that you're considering. I've done that many times. It even talks about yarn choices and all that good stuff. But that's really why I bought this book. There are, like I said, some patterns. And they are very, very detailed patterns. It also talks about doing intarsia, which as we know from doing that um, shawl with knitting fever, the Noro yarn. That was my first intarsia and I loved every minute of it. But it talks about bobbins, which I thought was pretty funny. Because if you watch that video, you are you seeing one of my shorts? I used hair clips and I even made the point to say that, hey, I need to invest some bobbins. And that actually has the, the bobbins right here that I want to buy. They're on my wish list. And it shows you how you can make different butterfly bobbing kind of things. And then it has the pattern. So I'm gonna link the Ravelry link of this book down below because you can actually see the patterns that are in there via that link. It kind of talks about brioche and it shows how to do brioche. So it has a lot of techniques in here. I'm not a vest person, but if I was a vest person, I would be all over that. I kind of want to be a vest person. And you could easily make sleeves with that and make it like a sweater. This hat is really something that I want to possibly make. And it uses DK weight yarn. I actually have a really fun DK weight yarn from Spun Right Round. I just need to find a solid color to go with it to use. And I think it would be super cool. 
So I, I may make that hat. I don't know. But then I was thinking, like, do I really want to make that hat? Would I wear it often enough to use a prized pretty yarn on it? And then I'm like, would I actually wear that enough to justify using that great yarn? I don't know. It's something I have to think on, definitely. There's a sock pattern in here, which I'm not going to do color work socks anytime soon. Just because I don't, I mean, I enjoy making socks. Don't get me wrong. I think sock knitting is great. But I have huge feet. So, it's just, they're not a pleasurable thing for me. I mean, they actually kind of are. But they're not. It's, I have this really weird relationship with knitting socks. They have these mittens. And these mittens, I was looking at these this morning. These mittens have like these crosses on them. I think they're adorable. I'm not much of a mittens person. It just doesn't get that cold here. And I feel like I have to take off my mittens to do anything. Although if you are a mittens person, they do make this um, thread that you can put in your mittens and it makes it so you can use your phone if it's a touch screen. But then I thought I could just make these fingerless mitts. I mean, it has a thumb on there, but I can just cut off the tip of the thumb, like don't make it, and just kind of bind off the thumb, and then kind of bind these off on the hands. But I like those. I like, they're, they're not a lot. The one on the back of the book, I really like the contrast of the lighter. I think those are kind of cute. But there was a hat, and then... There's a pair of fingerless mitts that really caught my eye to make on this book. It's called The Snowbird, and they are some intense color work hat mittens. But I do enjoy color work, so I think I may try to make the hat first. I'm going to try to figure out exact yardage, but that's something I would like to do in the fall. I just can't work on heavy weight yarns at this point right now and I just want to do something airy and light but to give you an idea of the cute sweater because oh my goodness yeah and the model is absolutely adorable I love her little hair and her little pigtail thingies on the top of her head yeah she's she's just she's cuter than the sweater and the sweater is pretty amazing and then there's this spark sweater Super, super pretty. This is a really good picture of the mittens that go with that color work hat. Right there. So that's the color work Bible. And it's a really nice hardback book. I was very, very happy to get that from my honey bunny. So for this month, main goals of April because I kind of like giving myself goals to do and then at the end of the month just kind of seeing if I actually completed those goals I don't know if you're the same way but I like to hold myself accountable for things because if not I can kind of not follow through I have to have lists I'm someone that always has to have lists and a planner and I have to make goals to reach those goals so for this month of April, I'm really wanting to cast on this Queensland Coastal Cotton. I think I talked about this in a previous video. Because I remember holding it like this and thinking it was so pretty. So I did talk about this yarn. But I want to utilize this yarn. This is 100% cotton and I really want to make a shawl out of it. I want to make a summer shawl. And I think I talked about that when I talked about the shawl. But that is one of my goals this week, to make the shawl. And the shawl that I am using is called the Galaxy Lemonade Shawl. This is a free pattern. And let me tell you, this was hard to track down. The pattern was up um, a couple of months ago when I was originally looking at this. And when I went to go download it, this morning to get my bag ready, I realized that the pattern had been taken down. And so I had to search for it. 
And I don't know if you've ever had to go searching for a pattern, but it can lead you down a dark road that gets more things added to your to make queue. So that's kind of what happened. But I did find it and I will link it down below to make it easier for you because that's what I like to do for this community is make life easy and fun for crafting purposes. But my queue did grow. My queue, I don't even remember what my queue was last time I talked about my queue. This year I was supposed to be working on the queue and that has really not, I don't know. I'm now up to 468 things. I think I was on three something at the first of the year. So we've gone up like a whole nother hundred items that I want to make, which is fine. I love to create. So that's just, that's fine. So that is going to be something that I'm working on this month. I'm also obviously going to be working continuously on my snakes. My goal is to have my cake finished this weekend. I will also be working to finish my Close to You shawl because I haven't really worked on it that much. But that is a goal. And I also would really enjoy getting done with the next of the Toft flower buds, which I was going to make that flower. I'll insert a photo here to show you. I would like to get that done. So those are my goals for this month, which is really not a lot. But what I would love for you to do is down below, leave me a comment what your goals are for April and your crafting life. If you have something that you're casting on or if you have something that you want to finish, let me know about it. And who knows, you may inspire me to add a whole other thing to make to my increasingly crazy queue. But until next time, you can check out this video right here and I will see you later. Happy crafting.